So you've been invited to play a member guest and you have this terrible issue coming over the top or coming out of your posture or reverse pivoting or slicing the ball off the planet and you're not sure what to do. So I want to give you the basic blueprint that you can rely on to overcome whatever swing afflictions you have by understanding why they're happening to begin with. And so what we understand here at Axis Golf is that there's no such thing as swing faults, just missing fundamentals. So we're going to talk about some of the more common things that I see on a day-to-day -day basis as well as the fastest way to fix each and every one of them. And so the three things we're going to talk about is the over-the-top move, how we come over the top and slice the ball off the planet, why we come up and out of our posture in early extend and block shots to the right or hook the golf ball, as well as how to prevent the reverse pivot or in other words, a weak pressure shift or a weak weight shift in the golf swing. So it's important to understand that there's no such thing as a swing fault, just a missing fundamental. So when somebody says that they're afflicted with coming over the top, this is nothing more than a symptom of not having shoulder engagement and not having secondary tilt. Because for as long as anybody's setting up in front of the golf ball, just throwing your right hand on the club, the shoulder's more out of its socket. Not only are you turning on muscle that cause you to come more over it, but you're already in a position by which you'd come more over the top in the downswing. And so the quick way we can fix that is just by getting into posture, getting the shoulder blades back in their sockets, hinging your thighs back, creating a little bit of secondary tilt to get the right hand to the club. Because for as long as you have that secondary tilt and the shoulder engagement, it's literally impossible for anyone to come over the top from that position. Because over the top is another way of saying loss of shoulder engagement and loss of secondary tilt. If you don't set up with it, it's very difficult to learn how to dynamically create it. Make sense? Yeah. So again, fast faults, even faster fixes. Um, next thing we're going to talk about is coming out of posture. You know, again, we all have the tendency by which we want to get here and kind of come up and out of our shot, leading to shanks as well as block shots to the right. And so, first of all, why does this happen? Fundamentally, this happens because we get the weight on the balls of our feet and set up. Let's say that we're too far away from the golf ball. So if I get into my better hinge position and I start reaching, I might go more on to my toes. That's where ball position is relative to your posture. And so if I start reaching for the golf ball, or if my weight's on the balls of my feet, my quads engage, I'm going to want to come up and out of my shot. What you would very quickly feel is if you set up with the weight on your left side, so balance your weight on your left side, if you get the weight on the balls of your feet, which is where even the PG manual for instruction tells you to put the weight, if you try to rotate the lower body, it's just not going to happen. Because if the weight's more than 50% over the ball of your foot, your quads engage, that's going to limit your ability to rotate. If your weight's back over the ankle, feel the difference. Yeah. All of a sudden, hamstring glutes are activated, you can clear the lower body from here. So if you have the issue where you're, where you're shanking the golf ball coming out of your shot, it's probably because you weight's on the balls of your feet. The way you quickly fix it, literally overnight, get into stand up straight, put your hands on your thighs, hinge your thighs back into the toes come up, at which point we add some flex to our knees. Beautiful. So again, we're not saying push your butt back, pushing your thighs back into the toes come up, then we add flex. Because this is what's gonna get us more over the ankle joint, help us engage the hamstring and the glutes muscles that allow us to rotate the lower body faster in the downswing, but also allows us to actually stay in our posture. And so when it comes to reverse pivoting, what would cause me to kind of float my upper body towards the target and then fall back on my downswing has to be yet again your setup. Because the first thing I'd look for is do I have positive secondary tilt, which would allow me to load into my right side, or do I have negative tilt? Because if I have negative tilt, like the Leaning Tower Pisa, as I turn, I'm going to want to fall into my left side, which is going to cause me to fall into the right side. Also, I look for is having too narrow of a stance width. If my stance width creeps too narrow, the lower body is going to over-rotate. I'm also going to want to sway into my left side. So the way we quick, quickly for, um, fix the reverse pivot is by having a proper stance width, feet up just outside of the hips, at which point we're going to add that same bit of secondary tilt. The reason why I'm bringing up all these elements in terms of the faults that we see is they're not really faults. They're just symptoms of missing pieces of posture. That's why what we've gone through over this program, including Axis Golf as a whole, is how do we holistically create a change You know, in somebody's golf swing? It's not by spending hours practicing. It's by understanding how the body can move in a more functional capacity. And so for me, what's completely surreal is all these elements that we've discussed so far today were initially designed to help people with Parkinson's disease play golf with reduced tremors and with better balance after my own father was diagnosed. It just so happens, it blows my mind each and every time I see somebody's fine progress doing this, because it's the same stuff we're working on with major champions like Bernhardt Longer, you know, Rory or Adam Scott or any of these guys of that ilk. And you guys fit somewhere in between those two horizons. Even though we have a 72-year-old and a 16-year-old of very different builds, you know, in statures, well, we've been talking about the same functional movement patterns that can literally help everybody. So again, what I say is whether you had Parkinson's disease for 15 years or Bernhardt Longer, we're seeing the exact same stuff. And that's why over the course of today, we able to find the progress we have been is not by understanding how to make another compensation to your golf swing, but understand why the compensations have to occur. 
we get rid of the need for the compensations, the golf swing game gets quite a bit easier from there. Make sense? Yes. Awesome. Good work today, guys. And so what we're going to have you do uh, from here is I want you to each have you hit one. Just going through the proper elements of posture, because what we talked about so far is proper primary tilt, stance width, weight over the ankles, shoulders in their sockets, not pinching back as hard as you can, just keep them in their sockets. We tilt until the right hand gets to the club. From here, only swing thought we need to rely on is that pulling action of the right shoulder blade. As long as you do that, the pressure is going to shift into your right side. We will create a little bit of elevation or space between the arms and the body, which will allow the right arm to fold. As long as that occurs, the downswing sequence of shifting your pressure to your left side, rotating the lower body as well as vertical force, happens as a symptom of all the stuff we talked about, which is where, Dion, let it rip. Awesome. Which is where at 16 years old, we're already clocking cub at speeds, holy moly, 128.6. And so what we talk about over the course of today is that there's no one on tour that has ever recorded club speed over 130 miles an hour. And so you just got really, really close to that. In fact, that's the second fastest speed ever recorded on tour. Tiger beat it at 129.2. Rory's fastest club speed is 125. And so what we're talking about here at Access Golf is not only ways to prevent injury and pain, but how to use the body more efficiently to better transfer energy from the body to the club to the ball by activating and leveraging your body type through the secondary tilt, but also through shoulder engagement, activating the fast twitch muscles that allow for explosive distance, whether we are 16 or 72. And so it doesn't matter who we're talking about, or who we're talking to. Gentlemen, I think we've successfully added quite a bit of distance and more importantly, more fun to your games. I know that you guys will benefit quite a bit from the stuff we talked about, and if you want to dive even deeper into our programs, this is one of over 200 video lesson programs that we have. So if you like this program, go ahead and dive a little bit deeper with us. We cover literally every element of the golf game, from mental game to fitness to putting, short game, wedge play, bunker play, you name it, we have everything that you need to cut your handicap in half and play the game that you deserve to play. So give it a shot. If this made a little bit of sense, let's dive even deeper together.